everybody, and thank you once again for joining us here on Gold Eyes Extra Inning on Shaw TV. I'm Kim Babbage Gazelle. This is Kevin Hirschfield, Rock and Rudy Gower on camera. And today we start the show outside the stadium, outside Shaw Park. And if you don't come early to games, you really should because it's a fabulous atmosphere out here. Great atmosphere out here. And like, I'm a big proponent of getting to any sporting event or concert like 45 minutes, oh, yeah. half hour before, just to soak in the atmosphere, talk with the people, and see what's going on. Obviously, they got great bands out here right now. This is a perfect example, just an outstanding atmosphere atmosphere here behind us so I always like coming early to these games it just makes it makes kind of the day uh, yeah. it's not just the game it's coming to the game beforehand and seeing what's out there it's always staying to the end of the game too I always do yeah. that I like to make the experience worthwhile I guess you could say when I get out to sporting events for sure well, and no one's rattling their keys at you right for leaving yeah, early that's yeah, right you're no, staying exactly. to the end. I'm staying right till the end no matter what the score is so and I'm <laughs> proud of that too <laughs> absolutely well it is beautiful out here, uh, not only the weather today, but uh, the outside of the stadium is just as gorgeous as the inside. You've got the Human Rights Museum behind us. Uh, it's just beautiful. Everything is gorgeous out here. So we do encourage people to come a little early to games. Um, but if you are here, you will notice when you're inside that beautiful stadium, yes. a lot of things going on. Well, maybe you don't even notice them because they're so part of the experience. The promotions, the sounds coming over the speakers, the uh, the announcer in the stadium. Well, we're going to give you a look into that today in our feature on the show, um, a look behind the scenes. And, yes. and my favorite thing is Ron Arndt, the longtime announcer, with his epic classic Gold Eyes call. We're going to give you a little bit of a look at that. Uh, so it's, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then coming up later on, we've got a great profile. Josh Romanski, uh, in my opinion, he's been the best hitter on the Gold Eyes this year so far. Of course, a staple on that championship team last year. He kind of reminds me of like the Josh Donaldson of the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. He's got not only the name, yeah. not only the skill, but he's got the hair as well. You may have seen our last show, Tom Vaith was kind of ripping him for the hair. Uh, but this guy, uh, I don't know if you want to call him a 5 tool player, which is kind of a baseball term, but I'm sure if he wanted to, he could be a gold eye for life. He's that good. Uh, one of the best players the gold eyes have had in a while for sure. So we're going to learn a little bit more about him today. All right, but before that, we're going to bring you the top five plays for this episode here on Extra Inning on Shaw TV. Time for a look at this episode's top five gold eyes plays. Beginning with number five, the July 12th game against Sioux City, Gold Eyes pitcher Edwin Carl continuing his great season as he strikes out 11 Explorers batters in seven and two thirds innings of work. He allows just five hits in a 9 2 fish victory. At number four, another great pitching performance, this time from the July 14th game against Kansas City. Zach Dodson takes a no hitter into the sixth inning. Now it was eventually broken up, but still a terrific stretch for Dodson, who picks up the win in seven innings of work, allowing just three hits and one earned run in a 16-1 fish romp. At number three from the same game against Kansas City and Gold Eyes first baseman Sean Plefner doing the most damage on the scoreboard, he picks up four hits and six RBI, which ties his career high. Plefner has been so consistent this season for the Fish, sporting one of the highest batting averages on the team. Number two, July 7th against Gary. Goldeye is hanging on to a 4-3 lead in the 10th inning against the Railcats, who have a couple men on base, but Ryan Chafee will get Gary to ground out into the game-ending double play clutch defense when the team needs it most. And at number one, July 13th against Sioux City, the Gold Eyes bats were absolutely on fire during their recent homestand. And on this night, five home runs from the Fish, including the team's first grand slam of the season from David Bergen, Mason Katz getting in on the act with a pair of round trippers, and Reggie Abercrombie and Andrew Sohn also joining the home run party. The Shaw Park crowd treated to some offensive fireworks on this night. Hi, I'm Regan Gates, and on game day, I'm the Press Box Producer. Okay, so what happens up here during a game? Uh, organized chaos. <laughs> up here, we control the music, the audio, the graphics, uh, and try and keep everything running smoothly and on time. 
Anything you hear, see uh, that's uh, behind the scenes, it's all coming from this room right here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's really hear it for your 2017 Winnipeg Go! I'm Ron Arnst. I'm the PA announcer for the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. Uh, my job is pretty much uh, what you hear whenever you come to the ballpark. Uh, I uh, introduce the players, I uh, read some of the promotions, uh, some of the ads that we have uh, here on uh, during game day. That's pretty basically it. Easiest job in the ballpark. <laughs> How many years have you been doing that? 24th season. Oh, excuse me. Oh. When I started, I was pretty traditional, pretty laid back, pretty within the lines of, you know, the way that you would normally hear baseball park announcers conduct their business, especially at the major league level, and kind of patterned myself after that. And we had a game day producer back there, Kevin Moore, who said, we got to entertain these people. They didn't just come to see a ball game. you got to loosen up and put a little more into it. So I came to him the next game and said, listen, I was thinking about the intro. Could we do this? He said, why not? Let's try it. And 24 years later, we're still doing it. Hi, I'm Steve Eitzen, I'm the official scorer for the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. Well, in a nutshell, my job is to watch the game. I watch what all happens on field, I record everything that happens, also uh, make judgment calls as to whether a, a play is a hit or an error, a pass ball, a wild pitch, and uh, putting in all the uh, statistics for uh, the game. How do you determine some of those calls, some of those close calls in particular? Uh, we have a bit of a, uh, an idea of how things uh, would normally be going. If they should have gotten it, then it's usually an error. If it's uh, something that they make a outstanding effort to get, then you're going to give the guy a hit. The data that you're inputting, where does it go? It goes both locally and uh, actually worldwide. Uh, one computer here takes care of the local stuff, goes up to the, the scoreboard as well as goes to our web feed for the video. And the other computer goes to our uh, uh, league, league statistician uh, where you can actually follow the game uh, in real time, play by play, pitch by pitch, uh, anywhere on the world. We're also in charge of directing Gold Eagle that on field entertainment, that type of thing, so uh, we're, we're pushing it from up here. Hi, I'm Tara Maslowski, and I oversee all the on field game production that happens on game days. A little bit of everything, all the on field promos that go on, hearing on props, dressing up contestants, um, setting the obstacles up on the field. And what about Goldie and Goldette? Goldie and Goldette, uh, they're here, sometimes they're here to help the contestants, sometimes they're here to be a distraction from them. A um, little bit of everything, I mean, they're out there pumping up the crowd too, trying to get the fans in the game as well. Uh, it's chaotic, it's complicated, but uh, we've got a lot of trained people who have been doing this a long time, so uh, we're a well-oiled machine at this point. This is today's obscure baseball term of the day. Today's baseball term of the day is dying quail. What a dying quail is, is something you can find very often hit off the bat of West Darville. It is something that is popped up, so to speak, behind the infield somewhere um, that falls in uh, in, front of the, in front of the outfielders for a hit. It's uh, something that's not hit very hard and something that really falls on, more on the side of luck than skill. Um, so that's, you know, that's pretty much West Darville's game. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what a dying quail is. So if you wanted to see one, just watch Wes hit. Pitch by Zimmerman, a little pop fly. Caldwell comes on, and it drops. It's a base hit for Darville. How long do you think you could hold the gold eyes for? Not very long. I wouldn't. Do you want me to try this right now? Sure. Do we have time? Okay. okay. Go, Winnipeg, Gold Eye! You know what? I
I, I could have kept going, but for... You took the breath at the wrong place, I think. I thought that was good. We should go ask Ron how I was there. I thought it was pretty good. I could have gone for at least 30 seconds more, I think. You think, eh? So, yeah, I think. But Ron does it the best, of course. Yeah. We don't want to take his time soon. <laughs> All right, so do you have any superstitions or when you were playing, you know, sports as a youngster, did you have any superstitions? Yeah, like I played more when I was young. It's it's funny because I really didn't. It's like when you're a kid and you see stuff like that and you hear stuff like that, you think you'd be so into it because you think everything is so cool when you're young. But I never had anything like that. Uh, I guess the closest thing was when we were nine years old playing hockey, our whole team decided heading into the playoffs we were going to dye our hair blonde. So imagine myself with blonde hair. Yes, it was very every good bit idea. of disaster as you could probably imagine. Uh, we didn't go very far in the playoffs, and uh, that was short-lived. But that was probably the closest thing I ever had to superstition. Never really followed that, but uh, I know it's very popular in many sports, including baseball. Well, particularly in baseball, yeah. right? I mean, even as a young ball player, I had a lucky penny that I wouldn't oh. let out of my sight. You know, I was sure that thing was my... That's really a superstition, I guess. Uh, though a lot of the guys on the team, they will do certain things like they will only ever put their right shoe on first, or they, you know, they have to chew a certain kind of gum, or goodness forbid uh, if they keep winning they don't change their underwear what oh, things like no. that I mean you hear these kind of stories right so uh, we wanted to check in with the gold eyes and find out what kind of superstitions they have superstitions are everywhere in baseball I mean whatever helps guys get, in, get into that happy place or in that zone um, a lot of us are big into routines so you know we do the same thing every day in, in the same way so for some people, it helps them mentally. The game is so mental, and you know, a lot of guys probably have to keep their 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 things in order, um, especially with the little things that they do on and off the field. Um, so, I mean, if they got something they have to do or wear, that keeps their mindset in a positive mindset, and they come to the field thinking, "Hey, we're going to do well." So, I think that's that's mainly why the superstitions come into play. Is trying to keep a positive mindset all the time. Well, the one thing I do is, you know, take a shower before the game, make sure my uniform and, and shoes are clean and it's just kind of a, a fresh way to, a way to go into the game and, you know, I feel good. You know, you look good, play good, everything kind of kind of goes good after that. I think I have a couple, like, I, I don't know if it's more of a superstition or just routine, but uh, one is just, I always jump over the foul line if I ever cross it. Definitely never step on the chalk lines for a baseball game or else you're, you're done. That's, that's, that's huge. One big thing I do, especially at home, is an hour before every game, I'll have a Smokey with uh, ketchup on the left, relish on the right, a bunch of onions and three pickles. First year, the first game that, our exhibition game, I got one because I was hungry and then we won. So I kind of said, this is my thing now, and just I've been doing it for the last three years. Personally, I'm not I'm not a very superstitious person, but I mean, through baseball and playing with guys, I've seen guys who put their shoes on the same way every day, their socks, they tie their shoes a certain way, something with their pants. Yeah, I know guys who, you know, won't wash certain parts of the uniform until we lose or, you know, won't shave their beard all season or, you know, stuff like that. Um, those, those are probably the, the more common ones that I, I hear about, but I'm sure we, we have some nasty ones out there that, uh, that people try not to, uh, to let everybody know about. I did have a dude in high school that I played with that he was actually really good. Um, he wore this, the same underwear every game at home. And he would wash it, but it got to the point where it was so beat up that he, I mean, he had to just wear his own uh, sliders and then put those just kind of on top of it, just kind of just keep it, you know, in his head that he's wearing it. But other than that, I mean, that's about the craziest I've ever heard. So. Baseball, baseball players are a weird breed of people. So some guys need that certain something to keep them going every day. And, um, you know, some guys it's just routine and what, what you do to, with your daily, you know, schedule to get yourself prepared. But. You know, I don't, I don't mind the superstitions at all. It's good stuff. <laughs> Home Run Sports is proud to support this community production of the Gold Eyes Extra Inning. Official supplier to and proud sponsor of the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, slide into Home Run Sports at Bishop Grandin and Lajibodier or online at homerunsports.com. We've got all the bases covered at Home Run Sports. Get ready for your game.
The Gold Eyes Extra Inning Show continues on Shaw TV, and it is time for our regular segment Beyond the Game. Uh, Gold Eyes Promotions Manager Tara Mislowski joins us as usual. Before we get to talking about the Gold Eyes in the community once again, uh, regular attendees of Gold Eyes games may notice that minor league teams are always out there before every game, standing with the team during the anthem, getting autographs, interacting with the team. What's this program all about, and why do you guys do something like that? So it's sponsored by Subway. It's called Subway Baseball Buddies. Um, we've done it every year. It's been done since before I even got here. Um, teams can apply, uh, boys and girls, softball, baseball, and it's a cool experience. I mean, a lot of kids don't actually get to ever be out on the field of Shaw Park or on a professional baseball field. Um, so they can register. They can register as early as April. That's when we take applications. It fills up very quickly, <laughs> so we encourage people to register ahead of time. But it's fun. I mean, to see the kids' faces when they actually get out on the field, Subway provides them with their certificate that the players actually sign for them, and they get vouchers for food for participating. So it's fun. It's fun to see the kids' reaction actions after and see them stand beside professional athletes and actually be able to run out on the field. No doubt, absolutely awesome. So the team, uh, they were out at Camp Manitou earlier this year, but they actually drove out to Manitou, Manitoba uh, for a clinic. Can you explain uh, where the guys went? Yes, yeah, so myself and Nigel, who works in the office, we were up early in the morning. We drove Reggie Abercrombie and Mason Katz out to Manitou. A little far of a drive. I don't know how happy they were with us that morning. Um, but I mean, they're great. As soon as they get outside with the kids, you know, we've talked about it before, Reggie especially. It's like a switch just goes on. Um, this is our second year doing it with Manitou. Erin is her name. They actually come out for baseball buddies. Um, and Reggie formed a connection with one of the kids there. So we decided to go out to Manitou. It was great. I mean, we were out there for about an hour or two. You know, Reggie was with them in the cages. Mason was teaching them fielding and throwing and stuff. So again, it's a lot of fun. The guys like doing stuff like that. It's rewarding for them to see you know how happy the kids are and stuff after and get the feedback from them. Absolutely well let's have a look right now beyond the game the gold eyes go to Manitou Manitoba. Boston Pizza, proud sponsors of the Winnipeg Gold Eyes and youth sports in Manitoba. Visit us online at bostonpizza.com. Manitobans recycled over 85 tons of residential material last year. That's enough to fill Shaw Park over 10 feet high. When each person pitches in to help make our community greener, everybody wins. Learn more about Multi-Material Stewardship Manitoba and what you can and can't recycle by visiting simplyrecycle.ca. Hi, this is Tom Vaith, and today on Inside the Lines, we're gonna show you how to round first base. So after the ball's put in play, as you're running the first base, what you wanna do is about the 45 foot mark, you wanna start bowing out, creating a, self, a turn for yourself as you get to the bag. All the while here, you want to start getting your eyes on the inside corner of the base. That way we don't miss the base. A lot of guys run with their eyes in the outfield and sometimes they'll miss the first base. Get our eyes on the inside corner, drop in the, the inside shoulder so we get a good turn lean to get into our turn. Eyes in the outfield picking up the baseball. How's 
on. This is Josh Romanski, outfielder for the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. He delivers, and there's a line shot in the right field. Bit of a broken bat, it'll get down. First pitch by Zawacki's a base hit. Started when I was four years old in Corona, California, where I grew up at the T-ball level. Yeah, I've been pretty much playing every day ever since. Played all sports growing up, but uh, but baseball uh, kind of separated, you know, kind of from the other sports. Josh Romanski. You know, it kind of just became a, a quest to, to get a scholarship. Romanski calls for it. I went to college at the University of San Diego. I was able to play for Team USA then. Once I got into pro ball, it was pretty much all around the States. Then I went to Japan, went to Puerto Rico. Yeah, baseball has been a, a, a just an amazing experience for me, just, you know, as far as getting to see the world. There's a long fly ball into right field. It is gone. Love the fans here. It's, in, you know, it's, it's a really cool uh, city feel, you know, they get behind the team, you know, even around the city they, they, they treat you well um, and, you know, they treat you like an athlete. So playing in an atmosphere like this where, where you get fans and, you know, you, you get treated well and, they, you know, the front office is obviously, you know, top notch, you know, coaching staff, whole deal. I mean, it's just really a total package as far as pro professional baseball There's goes. There's a line so. shot, that'll be for extra bases. Gets down in the corner, Romanski rounds first, he'll go into second, Delacruz. Gets it into the shortstop Gil Martin, but it's a double for Josh Romanski. I don't want to say I prank guys, but I speak my mind, and 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 that is usually in the form of some type of sarcastic joke. So uh, I guess yeah, I'm you know I I try to keep it alive in there, and 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 you know I'm, you know I try to I don't want to say I try to be funny, but uh, I think you know I I think guys appreciate me around the clubhouse. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. There's another base hit. Another solid single for Romanski. His bat has been hot for a while. My favorite movie is probably Bad Boys 2. This has got to be the worst, most emotional cop week of my life. Yeah, it's been a little rough. You know, I, I, I listen to hip hop more, and I'd probably say either Lil Wayne or Game. Uh, my favorite TV show is Suits on the USA Network. Harvey. Rachel. Mm. You look nice. Thank you. So do I. Now I see what you're always talking about. My favorite post-game meal is, is, is some type of pasta. So whether it's Alfredo or spaghetti or so, I like Italian food. So anytime there's pasta in there, I'm I'm first in line. Unfortunately, my favorite snack food is any type of potato chip, and that is my Achilles heel, as I eat way too many potato chips. You'll be simply amazed too when you discover Pringles newfangled potato chips. As many chips as in this big bag. Uh, my favorite superhero is Iron Man, just because he gets to be a real person and a superhero at the same time. Truth is, I am Iron Man. A call now to all Gold Eyes fans. We want you to show us how passionate you really are. Send us your photos from a game or from home. Show us how you support the fish. Send those photos to our Shaw TV Winnipeg Facebook page or our Twitter account at Shaw TV Winnipeg. You'll have a chance to win some tickets and will even be featured in our Gold Eyes Extra Inning Show. And now it's time for our trivia question and you can send us the answer for a chance to win tickets to an upcoming home game. The question is, earlier this season, which Gold Eyes infielder tied the franchise record for hits in a game with six? Message us your answers on Facebook or Twitter for a chance to be in the stands at Shaw Park. Fender Bender, Rear Ender, Mako Collision Repair and Auto Painting. 983 Wall Street. Proud sponsor of your Winnipeg Gold Eyes. What is Canada's national animal? A goose, bison, or a beaver? You gotta know this. How am I supposed to know this? I gotta be a goose, bro. Gotta be a goose, bro. Goose, bro. Goose, bro. Goose, bro. Goose, bro. I guess you ain't got no beaver. A goose, a bison, or a beaver? <laughs> I would say it's a goose. Like, it's the definition of Canada. This is hockey. <laughs> 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 I think it's a goose. Goose. 
don't. Shot! So be more careful. I'm gonna go goose as well. Goose. I mean, Canada goose down jackets are a big thing here. Um, it's the name of it's the name of our bus. The Beaver. The Beaver. Yeah. The capital city of Canada. What is it? Like all of Canada? Montreal. I don't know. <laughs> it's on the cool. East Coast. It's on the East Coast, no clue. Do you know any other cities besides Ottawa? I mean... <laughs> mm, Montreal. Close. Isn't mm -hmm. Montreal supposed to be it, though? Mm -hmm. um, Quebec. <laughs> no way. You guys are playing... <laughs> oh, that's not Quebec, bro. It's not Quebec. You're laughing at me. You said there's no beavers in Canada. You're laughing at me for <laughs> guessing the wrong city. It's not Quebec. It's Ottawa, bro, I think. It's Ottawa? Is it Ottawa? Yeah. It's Ottawa. Nice. <laughs> How many downs are there in Canadian football? Ooh, three. Yeah. I knew that one. I hope it's four. Yeah, I think I'm pretty uh, sure it's still four. No, it's not got, four. What, it's three? Three? You gotta be three. kidding me, man. Three downs. Well, see, and no wonder one. nobody watches that. So it's not four then, like American football. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'd say th three. Yeah. Three. Okay. Oh my God. And you get to run in the wide receiver. <laughs> Yeah, the, the wide receiver gets a head start, and there's only three downs? Jeez. Oh, my God. It's cheating. It's like the cheating. The foul pole is in the end zone? <laughs> well, first of all, it's a goal post. Goal post. Not, a, not a foul pole. <laughs> wow. What is Canada's national sport? So I'm going to give you a few options here. Is it hockey, lacrosse, or curling? I got to go curling. Curling. Whoa, buddy. You going to the horse on it? Yeah. Hockey's every day here. It's not hockey. I know it's, it's curling? not hockey. It's curling. It's curling. curling. It's absolutely hockey. It is curling. It's curling? Yeah. Oh. Well, so I would go, I'm gonna guess curling. I think hockey is just too easy of a Is it too answer. obvious of an answer? I, I just feel like hockey is way too obvious. Because I already said hockey. Yeah, but it still could be it. It could be, but I'm gonna go with curling. That's mine. So this is actually a trick question because we have two national sports. It's and hockey and curling. Neither of them are curling. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey is our winter national sport, and lacrosse is our national summer. Stay hot, buddy. We're on a roll here. Where would you go if you wanted to see a whale in Canada? Alberta, Ontario, or British Columbia? No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you do this. I don't, I don't know they had whales here. Well, there's whales everywhere. I know this one, wait, let's. <laughs> Alberta is landlocked, I'll give Got you that it. hint, okay? So it's not Alberta? Yeah. Awesome. Ontario is also landlocked. Okay. Okay. Where's I never talk about no whale? BC. It's BC. Where's I never talk about no whale? BC's on the coast. That's the only mm -hmm. reason why. Yeah, I don't know where Alberta is. <laughs> I don't know I'm where I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> the ocean, so uh, BC, British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was on the ocean, so it wouldn't have been close. It's California. All right, yeah. BC. BC. So it's the third one. Yeah. British Columbia. I don't even correct answer. Yes. If you wanted to see a loon, where would you go? The lake, the farm, or the forest? If you wanted to see a loon. What's a loon? It's probably in your wallet right now. Reggie, do you know a what a loon is? I don't even know what a loon is. Yeah, nah, I don't. Is that a bird? It's a lake. You know what a loon is? Yeah, the lake, right? You know what a loon is? Isn't it a bird? Yeah. I think the uh, forest, it's on there. It's on our dollar. That's why it's called a loon. Oh, learn something new every day. We, we, we're, we're, we're all about the cash money here. We don't, we we don't, go five. We don't do the, we don't, go five. We don't do the little, we don't little coins. Put that, nah. put that in the car and let it go. Yeah. Well, that will just about do it for us on another edition of Gold Eyes Extra Inning here on Shaw TV. You know what I love is the fact the entire time we've been here, people have been streaming in behind us, families, yep. young people to come to the game. Uh, the Gold Ice gets such great attendance all the time because it is such a great experience to come to these games. And no one jumping in front of our camera and interrupting us. We love you guys for <laughs> doing that. Yeah, again, the crowds have been so impressive this year. Uh, again, one of the... Uh, the top attendances in the American Association. Oh, wait, yeah. They put the rest of the crowds to shame. No offense to the rest of the teams out there, yeah. but the Gold Eyes always do it big here for yeah. sure. Well, we're going to close up for the week, but first we want to wish a very happy and successful and wonderful wedding day to Rock and Rudy Gower, who's getting married. Yes, By the time you see us on the air next time, he will be a married man. So congratulations to Rudy and his beautiful bride, Amanda, and good luck on your big day. Thank you so much for everything you do for us, Rudy, and thank you fans for watching. We will see you back here next time.